All praise to the most High God this day. So tonight's topic is called Mary before you carry. Mary before you carry. That's tonight's topic. Let's open up with the book of First Timothy 5 verse 14. Let's start there. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Go ahead. I would therefore that the younger women marry. Mm -hmm. Bear children. Guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Read that again. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Come on. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Mm -hmm. Bear children. Guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So now what we're reading here is says the younger women must marry. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Why is the Apostle Paul saying this? Jump up to the verse 13. Read the verse above it. Let's see why he's saying this thing. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 13. You know what? Start at verse 11. Let's start there. Read verse 11. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 11. Mm -hmm. But the younger widows refuse. For when they have begun... For when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. So when it says, but the younger widows refuse, meaning what? Meaning in terms of them being taken care of by the congregation. Because guess what? They are still young enough for them to get remarried, to be remarried again. You understand? So it says those ones don't take care of them, but they can still be able to, uh, to go out there, get work. You understand? And be able to what? Uh, to get remarried and have a hedge over them. And at that point, the hedge will be the congregation, but they can still be able to do what? To maintain themselves. You understand? So he was addressing the widows here, but he is dealing with the younger ones. You understand? He says, when they've begun to work, work wanton against Christ, meaning what? They are burning. Okay? Watch this. Give me First Corinthians 7. First Corinthians chapter 7. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2. Yeah, read verse 2, then we're going to jump. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2, then we're going to be jumping around. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2. Read. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, mm -hmm. and let every woman have her own husband. You see that thing? Let every woman have her own husband to do what? To avoid fornication. But the, the, he's not saying just get married because you are burning. Just get married without proving. He's not saying that. You still must prove. You understand? But he says to avoid fornication, let what? He says let every woman have her own husband. Let every man have his own wife. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. But if they cannot contain... Let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. We see that it is better to marry than to burn. So now, going back to First Timothy, now go back there. First Timothy five, verse eleven again. First Timothy chapter five, verse eleven. Read. But the younger widows refuse, mm -hmm. for when they have began begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. They will marry because guess what? That one thing it goes into what? Sexual lusts. You understand? They're going to go against the scriptures, commit fornication. So to prevent that, he says, they will marry. Let them marry. Okay, come on. Verse 12. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. Because they have cast off their first faith. You see that part right there? Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews. Okay, give me Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. He says, because they have cast off their first faith, meaning what? Christ. Verse, verse 11 still explains it. He says, because it says, they began to wax in against Christ. So that's their faith. Their first faith is Christ. Watch this. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Come on. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Read. Looking unto Jesus, mm -hmm. the author and finisher of our faith. You see that thing? The author and finisher of our faith. 
He is the first faith because he authored it and he finished it. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Okay, read that again. Verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Read. Looking unto Jesus, the mm -hmm. author and finisher of our faith. Read. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Because that was his reward. So let's go back. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 12 again. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 12. Read. Having damnation, mm -hmm. because they have because they have cast off their first faith. Because when you cast off Christ, you don't no longer want to follow the commandments anymore. You're going to have damnation. You understand? You will have damnation. The Lord will judge you and you will have damnation, meaning what? Eternal death. Go ahead. So the reason why we're reading this is because of verse 14 when it says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. So the reason why they must marry is to prevent what we just read, with, with what we've been reading from verse 11 down. Go ahead. Verse 13. And with all, mm -hmm. they learn to be idle. They do what? They learn to be idle. They learn to be idle. Okay, hold this. Give me Sarah 33, verse 27. And with all, they learn to be idle. Let's talk about these young women. These young women, when they are idle, we see what's going on in the world. We see what's going on in the Cassis, what these young women are doing. They be drinking heavy sex, popping babies. That's what happens when they are idle. Okay, read that. Sarah 33, verse 27. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 27. Read. Send him to labor, mm -hmm. that he be not idle. For idleness teacheth much evil. For idleness teacheth much, much evil. Because you look at the, the level of evil that, is, that, is, that our, our, our young daughters are partaking in. They are partaking in some deep level of evil. You understand? Because now they don't even they are not even afraid to be what to be drunk anymore as young high school students you see them high school primary they be drinking you understand broad daylight monday to friday we see it it's the the sabbath don't get me started on that one you understand the way they dress how they speak you understand the way they disrespect their parents and all of that because that's what happens when they are idle because they are not being taught they are not being prepared and taught. They are not taught how to grow up. They are not taught how to mature. They are not taught how to be responsible. They are not even prepared for marriage. You see that thing? And that's what brings idleness. That's, that's bring idleness. That's what it brings. It brings evil, much evil. You understand? So go back to where he was at. First Timothy 5, verse 13 again. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And with Earl, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. Wandering around from house to house, being a bum. And because when they wander around from house to house, what do you think they are doing over there? They're having sex, they're smoking weed. I'm talking about the sisters. They don't take care of the house, they don't cook, they don't clean. You understand? They disrespect their fathers. That's what you see. Okay, that's what these young women are doing today. They are disrespecting their fathers, their uncles, their brothers. You understand? So they are wondering how are, are they wandering about from house to house. Watch this. There's a scripture in Sarah just popped into my head. Give me one second. Mm. Give me that in Sarah 21, verse 22. Ecclesiasticus chapter 21, verse 22. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 22. Read. A foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house, mm -hmm. but a man of experience is ashamed of him. You see that thing? It says, a, fool, a foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house. Meaning what? Because they have nothing to do. They are idle. So the minute they wake up, they're already thinking of where to, which house to go to, to spend the day there. They be gossiping all day. They have nothing to do. They are just idle. You understand? He says, but a man of experience is ashamed of him. Meaning a man of experience, you know what they will do? They will do it gradually. You understand? Occasionally, sometimes, rarely, not all the time, not always. 
You understand? That's the point right there. Watch this. Because that's what idleness teaches. Mm. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 11, verse 29 now. Sirach 11, verse 29. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath, hath many trains. You see, you see, this says, bring not every man into thine house. Because if they are wandering about from house to house, they're going to the houses of those people that have no wisdom. Because if, because you see them, early in the morning already, then they, 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 this, this young child, this young girl next door, she's already at somebody else's house. Very early in the morning. What are they doing over there? And when they get there, the, the mother of, of that house, the, the parents, the older brothers and sisters of that, they don't say how. When I can tell, why are you here so early? Are you not supposed to be sweeping? Are you not supposed to be doing chores at your house? They're not asking that. Why? Because their own children are doing the same thing. That's why they are able to wander from house to house. You understand? That's why it says, bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man have many trains. Meaning what? Many evil thoughts. Because when they get there, they want to cough it out because they can't hold it. It's burning them. They can't sit with it. They have to be what? They have to do that thing. Watch this. There's another one. Give me Sirach. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 29. Okay. Sirach chapter 29 verse 24. Watch this. Sirach 29 verse 24. Ecclesiastes 29 verse 24. Come on. For it is a miserable life mm -hmm. to go from house to house. You see that thing? It says, For when thou art a stranger. On. Wait. For it is a miserable life to go from house to house. But guess what? Because they have no wisdom, they don't, they don't, they don't mind that. They'll go from house to house just gossiping, you understand, speaking evil of others and so forth. Because why? They don't understand. They don't see the misery within in that life. They don't see that because they don't have the wisdom to see it. Read on. For where thou art a stranger, mm -hmm. thou darest not open thy mouth. You see that thing? It says, thou darest not open thy mouth. But when they get there, they don't have the discipline to be quiet when they get there. Not only that, they leave the house early, they get there, they're not doing chores in the house first. You understand? Because I remember when we was growing up, they will tell you, listen, you are not leaving the house until that is clean, that is clean. With, in my case, guess what you must do? You must make sure that um, you take the sheep and the goat. You must go out there because I was a shepherd. You go out there, make sure they eat. After they're done eating, you must sit there so that they digest the food. After they're done with that, you bring them back. They must drink water. After that, you must look after them. By that time, the day, the day is almost done. You understand? So you get time to yourself is the time your window for yourself is very short. Because before you know it, now that you are no longer dealing with them, before you now you have to go and collect them. I'm talking about the sheep and the goat. You understand? If it's not there, you have to go to where they get water. You have to push a wheelbarrow. You understand? With 25 liters of, 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 of bottles to do what? To go fetch water. It's long distance. You understand? 30 minutes to 45 minutes of pushing a wheelbarrow. No, no, no tar road sand those type of things but today no they don't do that they are always on their smartphones you know chatting on youtube chatting on facebook exchanging naked pictures that's what these young girls do okay because they are what they are idle because idleness teaches much evil read that thing again verse 24 come on ecclesiastes Chapter 29, verse 24. Read. For it is a miserable life to mm. go from house to house. For the way thou art a stranger, thou darest not open thy mouth. You see that thing? So now, let's go back now. Let's go back. First Timothy, chapter 5. First Timothy 5, verse 13. Let's read that. First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 13. Come on. And with all, they learn to be idle. Read. Wandering about from house to house. Mm -hmm. And not only idle, but tattlers also and mm. busybodies. 
busy body. Speaking Isn't things. It? Hold on. It says, not only are they idle, but they are tattlers also. And busy bodies. What do you think they are busy doing? What do you think they are busy? Because remember, I give they are idle. They've got too much time on their hands. That's why we've got so much teenage pregnancy. We've got abortions. You understand? We've got young, young, young mothers, kids being mothers now. Why? Because of what we're reading here. It says, but tattlers also and busy bodies. They are too busy. Watch this. Sarah 26. We coming back. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26 and verse 10. Sarah 26 verse 10. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 10. Read. If thy daughter be shameless, mm -hmm. keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. You see what he's saying? It says, keep her in straightly, meaning what? Make sure lock her ass up in the house. Lock her ass up. That's what you must do. Keep her in straight, keep her in, we're in the house. Keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Because she's got what? How is she going to abuse herself? She's going to get a boyfriend? That's what these young girls do. They're going to get a, she's going to get a boyfriend. What happens? What comes with a boyfriend? Sex. What comes with sex? With sex? Pregnancy. You understand? STD. That's what comes with having a boyfriend and all that. You understand? Because boyfriend and girlfriend is an example of irresponsibility. Yes. Boyfriend and girlfriend is an example of irresponsibility. That's why a lot of them now, you know what they do? They take, uh, they take, they put the patch, they put the injections on to prevent them from getting pregnant. But they're not supposed to be having sex while outside of marriage. That's the point. But because they are being given license to have sex, now the ESO has given them ways for them to do it without worrying about those things that comes with having sex. Kids, responsibility. You see that thing? So that's how they abuse themselves because they're going to get a boyfriend. The boyfriend is going to be multiple boyfriends that will abuse her cookie. By the time it's time to get married, it's abuse is being used and abused. You see that thing? So... All of what we read in First Timothy is to prevent these things from happening. You understand? Is to prevent these things from happening. Going on dates. You understand? You see what these young girls are doing? Go metric, go high school, go varsity. Metric, varsity. You see what they do? They be having sex. Okay? High school, primary. You, I see kids go primary, unale boyfriend. How? Primary school. You understand? What, because of what? Because of being idle. They've got too much time on their hands. They are not given chores so that they can learn responsibility and being accountable for the tasks that, is be, that is, they're supposed to be taking care of. You understand? So let's go back. Okay. Let's go back to 1 Timothy 5, verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. And with all... They learn to be idle. They learn to be idle. Wandering about right? from house to house. Mm -hmm. And Come not on. only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies. Speaking things which they ought not. Speaking things which they ought not. What does that mean, speaking things which they ought not? Because if you, if you listen to the conversations of these young girls, I mean, the things they say, you understand? They be talking about sex the whole day. You hear them in the taxis. Okay, when we was distributing flyers at, at, in Pretoria, those are the conversations I was hearing when I was distributing flyers over there. They don't have anything constructive but what? But a boyfriend. No, this one, he likes me. That one, that one, he doesn't want to give me money, but he wants sex. I give him sex, he doesn't give me money. These are the conversations they have. No, that one is such and such in bed. Ah, that one has got a small thing. That one is big. That one is like, that's the conversations they have. Speaking things which they ought not. You understand? They are older mothers. They are the ones that are supposed to prepare them about what marriage is. They're supposed to be preparing them for marriage. Because dating is not in the Bible. Dating is not our culture. Dating, that's the culture. That's Western culture. 
The most High God never given us laws for us to bump and grind. There's no responsibility. There's no way in the Bible. You understand? That's why the Lord says we must be born again. We must relearn our culture, our history, what the most High God has given unto us and our forefathers and our children on how to govern the nation of Israel, which is this Bible. You understand? That's, this is how we're going to build the nation of Israel back up by applying what is written in this book. Go ahead. You know what? Give me Philippians 1, 27 real quick. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Before you get me that, actually, hmm, watch this. Philippians, let's go to Philippians. I think I still want that. Philippians 4, I believe. Let me see. Philippians chapter 4 and verse... Philippians chapter 4 and verse 3. Read that for me. Philippians chapter 4 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And I will entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel. You see that thing? It says, help, hold, wait, wait. Help those women which labored with me in the gospel. You see what it's saying? It says, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. So there was not, there was not idle. There was laboring with Paul in the gospel. So, so the same thing that we are reading here is the same thing that I've been telling the sisters. I need you to do this, 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 this. Why? Because we make sure that you're not idle. I don't want to see no idle sisters up in here. Why? Because idleness teaches much evil. And that's what we're reading in First Timothy. Okay? Keep going. Read on. With Clement also, mm -hmm. and with other, my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Whose names are in the book of life, meaning they will get the kingdom because there was laboring. You understand? Go back. Now give me Philippians 1, 27 now. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. This is what the conversation must be about. These young girls, the conversation they must have, this is what we are we're about to read right now. Read that. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Go ahead. Only let your conversation... Be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. That whether come I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, mm -hmm. that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. So what we're reading here, the commandment is, your conversation must, it must be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the commandment. So their conversation must be about what is written in this book. They must be talking about the history of their foremothers, what is, how their foremothers carried themselves, and what can they draw from those examples in order for them to conduct themselves in these last days. That's how they must be. They must, that's their role models. Their role models can be Bukanyimbao, Libu Beyonce. Mm -mm, those are not role models. Those are the reason why these young girls are so destroyed. You understand? That they are the reason why they are not they are part of the problem. Bukanyimba Olibu Beyonce. They are not the right role models for our young girls. Absolutely not. Okay. Go back to First Timothy 5. First Timothy 5 now. Verse 14. The reason why we read all this is so that we can understand what the apostle Paul was explaining in verse 14. First Timothy 5, verse 14. Read that. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. Come on. I will therefore that the younger women marry, mm -hmm. bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So now what we're seeing here is that I will therefore that the younger women marry. Now, this is a loaded statement that the Apostle Paul is saying here. The reason why he's saying they must marry is because of what we read. Because if they don't, these are the things they will do. And that's what we are seeing today. You understand? So he says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. That's the first thing right there. You understand? You must get married first. Then it says, bear children, guide the house. So for you to bear children, children comes with what? Sex must be, there must be sex. Sexual intercourse will take place for children to be born. So which means you will only get to have that sex once you are married. Not before that. Once you get married, that's when you'll be able to have those children because 
th those children, they're going to come through you having sex with your husband. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Titus. Okay? Give me Titus 2, verse 3. It says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. These younger women, they must get married. All these gallivanting in the streets that we see, these young girls following after the footsteps of these older sisters that be wearing half naked, that they changing boyfriends, men, today is, is this man, next month is another man, so on and so forth. That needs to stop because these young girls, they are following the same examples that these older sisters are projecting. So we have to stop that vicious cycle. Watch this. Give me that in Titus 2. Okay, Titus 2 verse 3. In order for these younger, hold on. In order for these younger women to get married, some they must be prepared for marriage. They're not, they're not just gonna jump into marriage. No, they must be prepared for marriage. And these are steps for that to happen. Read that. Titus 2, verse 3. Come on. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Read. Not false accusers, not given so much wine, mm -hmm. teachers of good things. So what you want to notice about the scripture right here, the reason why he's saying the aged woman likewise, because the aged woman, what do they have? Give me that in, um, hold on a second. Yes, Ecclesiastes 34 verse 9, read that. Let me write it down real quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 34 verse 9. Read. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things. Mm -hmm. And he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. You see that part right there? A man that hath traveled knoweth many things. The one I want to deal with is the next part of this verse. It says, and he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. Because these aged women, they have much experience. So they are in a good position to do what? To declare the wisdom they have. Because of that wisdom, they have, the, because of the, they have experience. So they will be able to tell you that, they, to teach you the things that you're not going to learn by just reading the scriptures. That experience, it comes through application, trial and error. And what? And time in this truth. You understand? So now when it says the, the aged women likewise, these aged women, they have what? They have experience. And they have what? They will declare wisdom to these young women. That's why he says the age women likewise. Because they have experience. That's the, that's the point right there. You understand? And not only that, give me that in Judith chapter 8 verse 24. Not only do they have experience, but watch this. Judith chapter 8 verse 24. Come on. The book of Judith. Chapter 8, verses 24. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, oh brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us. And the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. You see what he's saying? This is Judy speaking. He says, Now, therefore, oh brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us. So, guess what? So the first, the reason why it says the aged woman likewise, they must be in behaviors, becometh holiness. Guess what? First, they have experience, which gives them the right to declare wisdom to these young girls. Not only that, but their first educate, their first teaching is to what? They teach through their example. You understand? They teach by their example. So that's why it says, let us show an example to our brethren because their hearts depend on us. So like the sisters, these older women, their job will teach the young women because of what? They'll teach them by their example. Give me that in Matthew 5. Okay. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Watch this. Matthew 5, verse 16. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify Read. your father which is in heaven. You see that? He says that they may see your good works. These good works, they are going to see them by your example. The way you conduct yourself, your example is that's how you're going to teach others. By your conduct, the way you act, 
but because you apply what is written in this book. You understand? So go back to Titus now. Two. Verse three again. The book Come of on. Titus. Chapter three. Verse three. Read. That the aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Mm -hmm. Not false accusers. Read. Not giving too much wine. Teachers of good things. So now what you want to see here says that the aged woman, likewise, they be in behavior. So their behavior also counts because your behavior is the way you behave, the way you act, the way you conduct yourself, how you deal with others. You see, these young girls, they are, they are, these young women, they must see that example through you. You understand? They must see that line shining through you, which is God's commandment. Okay? It says, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 236. Look, this is our foremother from the tribe of Asher. Let me show you the example that she showed, which is the example that you sisters can use this day. Luke 236. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 36. Read. There was one Anna, a prophetess, mm -hmm. the daughter of P Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. Read. She was of a great... She was and what? had lived with... An, she was of a great age. She was of a great age. So this was an aged woman. She was an older sister. So she had experience... You understand? She had time in the truth. She was of a great age. She had experience and she was able to declare wisdom to these young girls. Okay? By her action, by her wisdom, by her conduct, by her behavior and the things she taught and how she act, which is the first teacher by example. Like we read in Judith 8.24. Go ahead. And had lived with an husband seven years from a virginity. You see that thing? Seven years she had lived with her husband. So she was married until she became a widow because her husband passed on. But the key is, this woman, she understood all of that. She had wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And she had experience. Okay, come on. She was a widow of about four score and four years. You see that thing? She was Which old. She was old. Hold on. Simple. She was an older sister. It says... She was a widow of about four score. A score is 20. You understand? So she was 80, what? 84 years. She was 80, 84 years old. Go ahead. Which departed not from the temple. Mm -hmm. But served God with fastings and prayers night and day. So you really need to think about it. She was 84 years old and she still, she was still fasting. You understand? She, he says she served the Lord with fastings and prayers night and day. So she feared the Lord. 84 years old. So this woman had a lot of experience. You understand? That's why she was able to do. Read the next verse. Watch this. And she, and she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. You see that thing? It says, and spake of him to all, the him is Christ, to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So she was leading the people, she was leading people to Christ. You see what she was doing? So this woman was full of good works. She was, she had wisdom. She, and she was an aged sister. She had a lot of experience. You understand? So go back to Titus now. Titus 2 verse 3. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Go ahead. The age woman likewise, mm -hmm. that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Read. Not false accusers. Stop right there. Not, Not false true. accusers. Hold on. Not false accusers. Because, because these young girls, right, we read in 1 Timothy 5, verse 14. You understand? It says, they learn to be, eyes. no, verse 13. It says, and with all they learned to be idle, wandering about from house to house, 
not only idle, but tattlers also busybodies speaking things which they ought not. Because of what? Because they are idle. Because idleness, these are the type of spirits that idleness will bring. False accusations, gossip. You see what I'm saying? Watch this. Give me the book of Leviticus. Let's get the law. Leviticus chapter 19. Let's get the law real quick. Okay? Because there's a law about that thing. Leviticus chapter 19. Verse 16. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 16. Read. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Because when you tail bear, when you are a tail bearer, you are a gossiper, false accuser. You understand? Guess what you are doing? You are standing against the blood of thy neighbor. You understand? You are going against your own people when you gossip, when you tail bear, when you cause problems, you are going against your own. You understand? So therefore, you are not applying love your neighbor as yourself. You see a thing? So that's what we're reading here. So, let's go back. Okay. Let's go back to Titus. Titus 2, verse 3 again. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. The aged woman, likewise, mm -hmm. that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Read. Not false accusers. Not what? Not Come false on. accusers. Not false accusers. Because I'll give an example. I'll give an example of a, of a woman in the past that did this thing because she had too much time on her hands. Watch this. Give me the book of First Kings. You know what I want. First Kings chapter 21. Let's go to the actual demon herself. Watch this. First Kings 21. First Kings chapter 21 verse 12. Watch this thing. Because now, because Jezebel was married to a weak man. Ahab was a weak Negro. Jezebel, Jezebel, he, she was controlling this man. She was telling this man where to get off. He was the king, but that didn't mean nothing to Jezebel. Watch this. Read that thing. Verse 12. Come on. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 12. Read. They proclaim the fast mm -hmm. and sit in a both on high among the people. You see what Jezebel did? Jezebel proclaimed a fast. So that this whole thing that she was doing, it looked like it, there's some righteous thing going on. You understand? But she was not about that. She had nothing to do with that in terms of what? She was not righteous at all. She didn't care about that. She only wanted to rule through her husband. So now she's getting Naboth on high among the people. Meaning what? She, she's going to speak. She's going to tell bear or falsely accuse Naboth the Jezreelite so that they can get his vineyard. You understand? Watch what Jezebel does. Next verse. Verse 13. This is what she's going to do. First she proclaims a fast, right? And she's setting Naboth high. She's setting, the, she's, setting, she's setting Naboth on high among the people. So the people turn against him. Read. And there came in two men Mm -hmm. Children of Belial, children of the devil. Go Belial. ahead. And said before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth. So in the so presence they, of the people, saying, "Hold on," it says they witness against Naboth. You understand? Even against Naboth. So that's what they did. These two men. You see what they did? They came in to speak evil against Naboth in the presence of all the people so that that's how he said they're going to set Naboth on high among the people because they were not going to use these two Negroes to speak evil against him so that they can use that as an escape goat to kill him. Go ahead. Even against Naboth in the presence of the people saying Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Mm -hmm. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. You see that thing? So that's what that's what what that's what happens when you you are a tailbearer. False the falsely accusing your neighbor, 
This is what we, it will lead to. It, it leads to death. That's why it says, don't stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Like we read in Leviticus 19. So go back to Hebrews. I mean, Titus. Titus 2, verse 3 again. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Really? The aged woman like wife, mm -hmm. that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things. So these aged women, because this is the example they are setting for the young women, is saying they, what, they must behave as becometh holiness, like we read in Luke 2, not false accusers, like Jezebel did, she was a false accuser. So that's not what we're looking for. That's not an aged woman that can declare wisdom to these young girls. Not given too much wine. Teachers of good things. Now I'm going to deal with that wine thing. Give me Sarah 9, okay? Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 8. Watch this. Sarah 9, verse 8. This is what we are seeing today. Because the women, they are getting drunk. More drunk than the men. You understand? Every day you see women with the Amstel Lager. You understand? Watch this. Sarah 9 verse 8. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 9 verse 8. Read. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman mm -hmm. and look not upon another beauty, another's beauty. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Read. For herewith Love is kindled as a fire. For here with love is kindled, in, is kindled as a fire. So here is saying, don't be deceived by the, the, don't just look at the pretty looks. You understand? She's got a pretty face and a big bum. You think, I want to marry that. No. Mm -mm. So the next verse, actually, that's what I want to deal with. Verse nine. Watch this. Sit not at all with another man's wife. Uh-huh. No, sit down with her in thine arms. Read. And spend not thy money with her at the wine. At the what? At the wine. So now that's the part we want to deal with. It says, you say what? It says, spend not thy money with her at the wine. Because when you sitting with a woman and she's getting, she's drinking, what usually happens when a woman gets drunk? So you see, the point is, you see, this is a this is a hard saying. He is not making it plain. He's saying, and spend not thy money with her at the wine. Because what happens when men spend money, they buy booze for women. What happens after? The women get drunk, they get horny, they have one night stands. That's how it goes. That's the steps. Those are the steps to those are steps to one night stands. You understand? Because when they get drunk, they get horny, they want to have sex. That's when, that's where one night stands happen. That's where morning after pill happens because, yo, I don't know how many men I slept with. You understand? I was too drunk. Yeah, that's what we're reading here. Read on. Come on. Let thine heart incline unto her. And so, through thy desire, Thou fall into destruction. You see, it says, lest, lest thine heart incline unto her. Meaning what? You fall for her because you know what? She was an easy catch. Because of wine, she, all you had to do was just buy an Amstel. And guess what? She'll open for you. That's what he's saying right there. You're going to fall for her because you're always going to want to do the same thing that you did the last time. Just buy an Amstel lager. Buy brutal fruit. She'll fall for that thing. You see that thing? It says, and so through thy desire, thou fall into destruction because she's going to destroy you. Why? Because when she goes to a different bar, what do you think she's going to do when she gets there? She's going to do the same thing. But because now you, you are a simp, you have fallen for her, guess what? You keep going to her and she keeps going to other men, abusing herself. Guess what? You catch a disease, you drop dead. You understand? But what I'm showing you is, is that's why it says, not given too much wine. They must be not be getting drunk. Because that's what's going on today. Women are just getting drunk. And when they get drunk, the things they do when they are drunk is the reason why they are not supposed to be anywhere near the alcohol. Okay? Watch this. Sarah 19 verse 2. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19 verse 2. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 2. Read. One and woman will make men of understanding to fall away. You see that part right there? Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. Because guess what? The women, she's, we, there's wine and there's women involved. What happens when there's alcohol and women involved? Sex happens. Orgies happens. One night stands happen. You understand? Because now, wine and women, who's buying the booze? The man is doing that. Because you want to get something out of it. You want to get the box. You understand? He says, we'll make men of understanding to fall away. Because also, not only are they getting drunk, you getting drunk. So when you get drunk, give me Proverbs 31. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 31. Let me see what verse I want. Okay. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 4. Proverbs 31 verse 4 and 5. Watch this. The book of Proverbs 31 verse 4. Mm -hmm. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine. No, for princes, strong drink. So because when they do get drunk, there's things that happen. Watch the next verse. This is what happened when they do. Because they are drunk. Because now that they are drunk, they don't use the laws of the Most High God to make decisions. They are using the little man downstairs. Go ahead. Lest they drink and mm -hmm. forget the law. You see what happens? Lest they drink and forget the law. That's why he says, a man, he says, wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. Meaning what? You are going to lose all manner of course sound judgment when you are drunk. You understand? It says, lest they drink and forget the law. Go ahead. And pervert the judgment of, of any of the afflicted. You see that thing? You can make sound decisions when you are drunk. When alcohol is in the mind, you're not going to make sound decisions, especially when women is involved. You're not going to make the right decisions. You understand? Because as you get in drunk, they get in drunk. What do you think happens in the mind? Sex happens. That's really the natural thing. That happens. You understand? That's why a lot of the times, you know, couples that always, that don't stay, that cannot stand one another. But guess what? The day when they drink, it looks like everything is all good. But when the alcohol wears off, they go back to nigger and negress again. You understand? Because the alcohol, it makes them, it takes them, it is an escape for them. You see what I'm saying? So likewise, it's the same thing here. Go back to Sarak 19 verse 2. Again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 19 verses 2. Read. Wine and woman will make men of understanding to fall away. Come on. And he that cleaveth to harlots will become impudent. You see what he's saying? Meaning what? Void of judgment. You're not going to make the right judgment. And he that cleaveth to a harlot, because that, that's where harlots, where do, where do you find them? At the wine. At the parties. you find harlots there. It says, and he that cleaveth to a harlot will become impudent. They don't make the right decisions no more. When the minute you alcohol enters into your brain and you get drunk, some people cannot handle it. You understand? They start to do, they start to act out of character. Or really, their, their true character comes out. Okay, that's a topic for another day. I'm going to deal with that class in some day. Sarah 26 verse 8, read that. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 8. Before you get that, give me Sarak 31 verse 27. Ecclesiastes 31 verse 27. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 31 verses 27. Mm -hmm. Wine is as good as life to a man. Read. If it be drunk moderately. If it be drunk moderately. Wine is as what? good as life to... Hold on. Life is as good... Wine is as good as life to a man. Meaning wine is good. That's what the Lord is saying. If, that's the very important part right there. If it be drunk moderately. So if you drink it moderately, it's all good. It's not a sin. The minute you over, you drink with excess, 
does the same. You understand? Go ahead. What life is then to a man that is without wine? Read. For it was made to make men glad. Because it was made to make men glad. So wine was made to make men glad. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. Wine measurably drunk and in season bringeth mm. gladness to the heart. Read. And cheerfulness of the mind. So it says measurably drunk, measurably. So you, you is what? Moderately and in season. Not all the time, but in season. You know, you understand? We have high holidays and so forth. That's when we have wine and things like that. You understand? It says it bring it bringeth gladness of the heart and cheerfulness of the mind. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. But wine drunken with excess mm -hmm. make it bitterness of the mind read with brooding and quarreling you see what the lord is saying but wine drunken with excess now you drink you you get you now you have abuse you are abusing the alcohol now it says make it bitterness of the mind now you start to fight with other people coming back to the young women that's why it says the older women, they must not be what? They must not be what? They must not be drunks. Because of what? It says it maketh bitterness of the mind. That's why when they do get drunk, they have sex. That's why a lot of the women, they, they get so drunk that they start kissing other women. We've seen these things. Yep. All of a sudden, they just lesbians out of nowhere. You understand? Because of what? It makes them do things that when they are sitting, it's like a truth serum. You see, you see what I'm saying? It's like a truth serum. It will expose their character because a lot of the times they just be, you know, running on funk. Faking it. You understand? But when wine enters into the bloodstream, guess what? It brings out that demon that's behind in this whole time. You understand? With brawling and quarreling. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. Verse 30, come on. Drunkenness. Drunkenness increases the age of a fool till he offend. It diminishes strength and makes it wounds. You see what he's saying? Well, drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. So, it, that is, so what is the Lord teaching us? This fool, he's got rage. That's a demon. He's got rage and he's a fool. Wine is going to increase that rage of that fool. You understand? Until you offend. Because now, normally you have rage. But now when you drink, it increases that rage. You start to fight with other people because you are drunk at this point. It diminishes strength because when you're drunk, you're not going to fight like somebody that is not. You understand? And make it wounds because they're going to punch you in the face. The people will beat you up. The next day, that's when you're going to feel, you're going to see injuries and all that. That happens all the time. And guess what? When it comes to the women, the next day, guess what? A week later, now it's time for her to get a period. She's jumping now. Now she just realized, I skipped my period. That means chances are you are pregnant. Now you have to, now you start to think back or, Konji, when did I have sex? And who did I have it with? There were just too many people at the wine. I don't remember. But now you skipped. You understand? Guess what you will do at this point? You know where they run to? The abortion clinic. Not the clinic, that slaughterhouse called the, the abortion clinic. To kill that baby. Because of what? Being idle. That's why it says, not, not given too much wine. Why? Because these are the consequences of it. You understand? Let's go back. Let's go back to Titus. Okay, Titus 2. Go back there. Titus 2 verse 3 again. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Go ahead. The aged woman likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. 
Read. Not for the accusers. And too much wine. Teachers of good things. So these young, these aged women, they are, must be teachers of good things. And how do they teach? They teach by example. Like we read in Judith 8. Go back to Judith 8 again. Judith chapter 8 verse 24. Read that again. Teachers of good things. So they teach by example. These older sisters. You understand? But not today. That's not what we're seeing this day. Okay. Judith 8 verse 24. Come on. The book of Judith chapter 8 verse 24. Read. Now therefore, O oh brethren, let us show an example to our brethren because their hearts depend on us and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. You see what, is, what she's saying? So these women that are teachers of good things, they teach by their example. You understand? They teach by their, let their light shine so that these young girls can have what, can have the, an example to follow on how to behave. You understand? So likewise, the same thing that we are doing with the Proverbs 31, the Titus 2 classes and all that, is to what? Is to teach these sisters how to conduct themselves according to how their foremothers conducted themselves so that the young girls coming behind them can follow the same exam the same righteous example. You understand? So our job is to get rid of these Jezebel spirits so that the Judith can come back. The, the Shifras can return. You understand? The Judith can come back and so forth. Those are the sisters that we're looking for, that the Lord is looking for. Them Jezebel sisters, the Lord cannot use them. Okay? Go back to Titus 2 verse 4 now. Watch this. Titus chapter 2 and verse 4. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Mm -hmm. That they may teach the young woman to be sober. You see that thing? They must teach the young women to be sober. So if how are they going to teach the young women to be sober? Because they are sober themselves. And they teach that by their example. That's how they're going to be able to teach these young women to be sober. Because of their own example. And the young women will believe it because they see it. You understand? Read. You see verse 4 says, to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. So now... I want to pause right there when he says to love their husbands. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Peter, okay? 1 Peter 3 verse 6. No, let's start at verse 1. 1 Peter 3 verse 1. To love their husbands. Watch this. 1 book of Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. Like wives, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands that if they in that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So now what you want to notice here is that these, this is an example of what? This is an example of a sister that is married to a husband who does not believe. You understand? But guess what? The Lord is saying, this is the Apostle Peter now speaking. The Lord is speaking through the Apostle Peter. He said, listen. If that's the case, that's fine. The, we, the wives, they must still be what? They must still, still be in subjection to their own husbands. They must still submit to this man. Even if he doesn't believe what you believe at this point. But you're going to win him over by your example. Because it says that if any obey not the word. Talk about the husband. Meaning they don't observe the Sabbath and all of that stuff. But guess what? You, the Lord woke you up first in the house. Your job is to bring your husband over by your example. He says, if any obey not the word, they also may without the word, meaning the husband may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Meaning the way you speak to your husband, guess what? That's how you're going to win him over because guess what you are doing? You are, you are converting. You are repenting. The way you used to speak to him is going to change. The way you address him will change. You understand? You submit to him because you understand what it means to submit. You will apply what is written. You understand? That's how they are going to be able to teach these young women to love their husbands. This is one of the examples right here. Go ahead. And you know what? 
Wait. While they hold on, wait. He says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Let's stop right there. We're coming back here. Give me the book of Ephesians real quick. Ephesians 5. They must be in subjection to their own husbands. Ephesians 5 verse 22. Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. They must submit themselves to their own husbands as unto the Lord. So the same way they submit themselves to, the, to, the, to Christ, that's how they must submit themselves to their husbands because their husbands represent Christ in the house. That's the point. Go ahead. For the husband is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. So the same way the husband is the head of the wife, Christ is the head of the church. So the husband is the head, the wife supports the man. That's her role. You understand? Because she was made to serve him. She was made to serve us. So that example that the older women are going to show by their conduct, the young women also, when they're looking at that, they're going to say, ah, this, that's the footsteps I must follow. That's the example I have to follow. And when these older women teach, declare wisdom, guess what? These young women have to listen, pay attention, and apply. You understand? Read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You see that part right there? Just like the church, when in the 12 tribes of Israel, we are subject to Christ. We are his subjects. He is our king. He is our ruler. He is our Lord. Then it says, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So go back to Go back to First Peter now, 3 verse 1. So we understand when it says the, the wives be in subjection to their own husbands in some of the things or in, in everything. Everything like we read in Ephesians. So now we have a better understanding of what it means when it says, go back to First Peter 3 verse 1. Again. First book of Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Go ahead. Likewise, your wives be in subjection to your own husbands. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. You see that part right there? So now when it says be in subjection, we know is in everything. Why? First Corinthians 11 verse 8. They must be in subject to their subjection, subject to their own husbands in everything. Why? This is the key right here. First Corinthians 11 verse 8. Read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. Read. For the man is not of the woman, but the, the woman of the man. But the woman of the man, because she comes from men. She was made to serve the man, to glorify the man. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman, mm -hmm. but the woman for the man. You see that thing? The woman was created for the man, not with... You understand? Not to be equal with. No, no. For him, a help meet like unto himself. To help him. You understand? We build, you nest in what we've built. You see how that goes? We build and you nest in what we have built. You take care of what we have built. That's how this goes. You understand? Go back to first Peter's now. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Read. While they behold your chaste conversation, while they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear. So now is as while they, who's the they? The, 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 your husband is going to behold your chaste conversation that is coupled with fear. Meaning when you speak to your husband, you're not going to speak to him like you're speaking to another man. 
You understand? You're not going to speak to him like you're just speaking to some boy out there. No. You're going to speak to him with respect. Likewise, you speak to leadership, don't be talking to him like you are Shaniqua. Don't talk to me like you are, you are, you are Shenene. Don't be doing stuff like that. Okay? Because you, you, there's a website called Wellstar Hip Hop. Oh my God, man. The things that we see on that website, the things that the black women be doing, man, you can't make this stuff up. If you watch hip, world, hip hop, what? Hip hop, world star, world star hip hop, something like that, worldstarhiphop.com. Man, the stuff that you see over there. You see really how low we have fallen as a people. You understand? So what you see here says, who's adorning? No, no. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Meaning your conversation, must, it must be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Your mouth, when you open your mouth, give me that in Proverbs 31 now. You understand? She opened her mouth in wisdom. Proverbs 31. Your conversation must be filtered with the word of God. That as it is written, Okay, watch this. Read that. Proverbs 31 verse 26. Come on. The book of Proverbs 31 verse 26. Read. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. You see that part right there? And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Because that's the fruit of the spirit that we read about in Galatians 5. Kindness. Meekness. So it says, she openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So guess what? When she speaks to her husband, when she speaks to the men of Israel, when she speaks to the leadership that has been set over her, you can tell by the way she speaks that she speaks with what? She speaks with kindness. She speaks with fear. She's not talking like she's talking to some boy. And guess what? I can pick it up if you are, you are hiding Jezebel up in there. I'll pick it up. You understand? I will pick it up. And I've already picked up already. Sisters, I'm coming for you. In a good way. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Sirach real quick. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 26. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26. No, no, no. Not 26. Not 26. But 36. Ecclesiasticus. 36 verse 22. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verses 22. Read. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, mm -hmm. and a man loveth nothing better. You see that thing? The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. Yes, we like a beautiful woman on our arm. Don't get it twisted, brothers. Don't let no woman be telling you otherwise. Mm -mm. Yes, we like a beautiful woman on our arm. It says, and a man loveth nothing better. Yeah, that's right. A trophy. Let me say that again in case I start at. Yes, that's what we're reading here. Trophy. Next verse. If, keep going. Read that now. Watch if, this. If there be kindness. Stop right there. If hmm? there be kindness. Yes, she can have a pretty face and all that. But a lot of the times you see a woman, a sister with a pretty face, but she's a demon. Just she, as long as she's beautiful, as long as she's quiet. The minute she opens her mouth, that's when you're going to see all manner of ugliness. Why? Because her mouth is not chaste. You understand? Her mouth is not chaste. Her mouth is not checked. When she speaks to a man, she speaks to a man like she's speaking to some, some, you know, some low life. Nobody, not important. You, know, you see what I'm saying? With disrespect and contempt and reproach. But this sister right here, she's beautiful. This is the example of our foremother, Susanna, by the way. Okay, we're going to read about that next. Read verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 23. If there be kindness, mm -hmm. meekness, read, and comfort in her tongue, mm -hmm. then is not the husband like other men. Then is not her husband like other men. That's some heavy stuff. 
So brothers, this is the type of woman you want. Yes, beautiful sister, but there must be kindness and meekness and comfort in her tongue. Then is not her husband like other men. You're not going to be like other men. You understand? Because guess what? The next verse will tell you that. Read the next verse. Watch this. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. Mm -hmm. A help like unto himself. Read. And a pillar of rest. And a pillar of rest. This woman right here, she is a pillar of rest. She is not a pillar of salt. No. She is a pillar of rest. Now, what you want to notice here is that it says, if there be kindness and meekness, not only that, comfort in her tongue. But verse 22 says, the beauty of a woman cheddeth the countenance. Watch this. Give me that in history of Susanna. Chapter 1, verse 2. Come on. History of Susanna. Chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chelsius, a very fair woman and one that feared the Lord. You see that thing? So this sister was beautiful. He says she was a very, very, very fair woman. Meaning what? She was bad to the bone. It says, then it says, and one that feareth the Lord. You see that part right there? That's the key right there. Not only was she beautiful, but she kept the commandment of the Most High. She feared the Lord. Go ahead. Her parents also were righteous mm -hmm. and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. You see that? She was, meaning what? She, she, her conversation was chaste, the way she carried herself. You understand? In her tongue was the law of kindness. She opened her mouth in wisdom. Why? Because she was taught the law of Moses. She was taught the commandments. She understood right from wrong. She understood who were the elders. You understand? She understood how to speak to them. She understood how to speak to the men. She understood all of that stuff. Not the black woman, Jezebel woman today. They don't know how to do that. You understand? And that's the reason why today, one out of four women get married. 90% of women, they're the ones that are initiating divorce. 80% of the men, they are the ones that initiate divorce. But 90%, they are the ones, that's the reason why there's high divorce rates is because of the woman, the black woman. You understand? Hmm. Topic for another day. Watch this. Give me, go back to, go back to, uh, go back to First Peter's. Go back to First Peter's, Okay. First Peter's. Go back to First Peter's chapter 3, verse 3 now. First Peter's 3, verse 3. Read that. First book of Peter's chapter 3, verse 3. Go ahead. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of planting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. You see what he's saying? So he's saying your beauty must not must not be just your outside you must not be that must not be what makes you who you are just one of saying don't deck yourself one of saying that don't get it twisted but what the lord is saying is that let that that must not be what makes you you understand yes the beauty you must be beautiful on the outside but you also must be beautiful on the inside and what's going to make the inside to be beautiful you, are, you must be applying the laws of God to change the way you think, the way you have been taught, how you must conduct yourself and so forth. That's why it says, the beauty of the woman shared the countenance. If there be kindness and meekness and comfort in her tongue. So that's what is, that's the same thing that Sirach 36 is saying in a different way. Go ahead. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. You see that part right there? But let it be that hidden man of the heart. That hidden man is Christ. But guess what? You, the man, the, the, your Lord or the leadership is that hidden man of the heart. Because your mind must be according to what? Your mind must be according to the men that are set over you. Or your mind must be according to what? Your husband, your Lord, 
Because your mind must be according to his mind. If you are married, your mind will be according to your husband's mind. If you are not married, your mind will be according to leadership's mind. That's what we are reading here. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. You understand? Keep going. In that which is not corruptible. You see that part right there? In that which is not corruptible. Because this is, by the way, understanding that you must be dealing with a godly man. Because that's the given in this truth. You must know that already. You understand? Because if your mind is according to your husband's mind and he is a simp, you understand? We're not talking about that. We're talking about that godly man, that one that keeps the commandments of the Mosa. We talk about that man because his mind is according to Christ's mind. That's the key. Go ahead. Even the, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Come on. Which is the sight of God of great price. You see what he's saying? It says, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. In the sight of God, that's of great price. You understand? In the sight of God. So, which means, you having that wisdom, knowledge and understanding, knowing how to conduct yourself, how to love your husband, because you must be taught. Like we read in 1 Timothy 5, it says, let the younger women marry. Before you get married, you must be prepared for marriage. And these are the steps that I'm showing you, sisters, how you, be, you, how you are prepared for marriage. You must follow the examples of the older sisters. You understand? And we have a lot of examples in the scriptures on how the, our foremothers conducted themselves. That's why we have these classes. So you can be able to say, you know what? Ma, I want to follow after this righteous foremother right here because she was a righteous sister. You understand? She inspires me. So I want to be like her so I can what? So I can know how to, what, to be a benefit to my nation. Read. For after this man, in the old time, the holy woman also, mm -hmm. who trusted in God, they did one themselves. Who trusted in God. These holy women of old, they trusted in the Most High. Go ahead. Adorn themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. You see that it says they adorned because their covering was what? Their covering of marriage. They had a hedge over them. He says they adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Because they had a hedge over them to guide them and tell them what to do. Go ahead. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, mm -hmm. whose daughters ye are, as long as ye dwell and are not afraid with any amazement. You see that part right there? So this, she, the apostle Peter is giving us an example of our righteous foremother, Sarah. You understand? Our foremother, Sarah. She's saying he called Abraham Lord. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? This is beautiful stuff. Because you're acknowledging the covering that is over you, which is who? The man of Israel. You understand? Calling him Lord. You see, that's a sign of respect, reverence. She reverenced her husband, Abraham. Well, not the black woman today. She don't want to do that. That's why they, what, they carry before they marry. Because the thing that really baffles me is that the sisters will, what, these young women, not just the young women, but the older women, but these young women, they follow the footsteps of the older women. So, which is, they follow the poor example of the, the older women. What baffles me is, you hear sisters be saying, I don't, want you, I, don't, I don't want men tell me what to do. Okay. But you open your legs, that man, he lies with you. He gives you a baby. You give him, him the most valuable asset you have, but he's not going to tell you what to do. I mean, where's the logic? I don't get this. Think about it. Your most valuable position, you lay down with that man. He gives you a child, or he, even if he doesn't give you a child, you understand? Because when he's, when he's laying down the pipe, what does that mean? 
you are submitting to that man 100%, but he's not going you can you're not going to he's not going to tell you what to do. That makes sense? That makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You understand? So that's where the Bible comes in to clear the, that confusion. Okay? That's where the, the, the Bible comes in to fix these problems because our sisters do not know how to pick men. They don't know how to choose men. They can't choose and pick men. That's why the way we did things in Israel, we had arranged marriages. You understand? Why? Because men would prove the men that is going, you're going to get married to. Because men, we know what to look for. You sisters do not know what to look for. I'm going to tell you straight. You don't know what to look for in a man. We do. Because we men. Men know men. You sisters do not. You understand? Watch this. Um, let's go back to Titus now. Titus 2. Go right back there. Okay. Titus chapter 2, verse 4 again. You know what? Hmm. Let's get some more. Give me the book of Ruth. Okay. Give me Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3 it says to love their husbands. Meaning what? You must be taught to love your husbands. So you marry before you carry the baby. So we need to change that because the most High God has given us the steps on how to prevent kids out of wedlock, baby mamas. The Lord has set out blueprints on how to prevent all of that. Okay. Give me the book of Ruth real quick. Ruth chapter 3. Let's read verse 1. Okay, watch this. Um, you know what? Before you get that, let me, let's read. Read Ruth chapter 3. Yeah, read Ruth 3 verse 11. Now, this is our foremother, Naomi, okay? This is our foremother, Naomi. She's speaking to uh, this more about, this more about women. Okay, read that. The book of Ruth, chapter 3, verse 11. Go ahead. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. Mm -hmm. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. You see what Ruth was? She was a virtuous woman. You understand? She was a virtuous woman. And you can read about that in chapter 2. What she was doing, the things that she was doing. You understand? Among the nation of Israel. Because you know why this is important? You notice how today the black woman is always complaining that black men are going after white women or Indian women or Chinese women, which is a new trend now with the Chinese women. The point is, they are always complaining about the women of these other nations, right? But they don't actually sit down and say, but what's wrong with us? Why can't we get a man? Where can we get married and keep that man and build a family with? You know why? Because they don't want to be told what to do. That's the point. They don't want to be told what to do. Because when you look at these other women, okay, look at the white man and, her and his white woman. They get married. Look at the East Indians. They get married. Look at the Arabs. They get married. Look at the Chinese. They get married. The number one woman who does not get married is the black woman. And when they do get, if they do get married, they always divorce most of the time. You understand? What I'm trying to show you is that it's time for the black woman to look within, the woman in the mirror, to say, you know what? I need a hedge over me because I don't know how to pick men. The reason why you see these women today, they have, they have been ran through by men. You understand? They've been dealing with losers, simps, is because they don't have men over them to guide them and tell them what to look for because they don't need no men. Because a lot of the times when they say, I don't need no men, you always, a lot of the times, brothers and sisters always think, no, in terms of a husband. No, it goes beyond that. Your father is a man. Your brother is a man. 
Your uncle is a man. Your grandfather is a man. You see that thing? So when you say you don't need no man, those men, they are, they are heads. They are your head. Their job is to teach you what to look for in a man and what to, how to identify a good man. And the scriptures are there for us to do that. You understand? So the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up with this Moabite woman here is that, is this. Today, when you look at obesity, you look at the rate of not getting married and all of that. I mean, we, we take in the charts and the women are taking the charts. The men that see a good woman, they quickly gain, they marry the woman. They don't waste time. You see that? So what I'm trying to show you is that some sisters will look at this and say, yeah, but she was a Moabite woman. Listen, this book is your book. You understand? Because today the nations are using our book to get themselves together with our book. They are not necessarily reading it, but they are just taking bits and pieces by their ancestors who learned from our forefather, King Solomon, and they are implementing it in their nation. When the owners of the book don't want to read this book and apply it and build their nation. Now, another topic, I'm going on a tangent. Let me come back. Give me Ruth 3 verse 1 now. The book of Ruth, just 3 verse 1. Go ahead. Then, Naomi. Her mother-in-law said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that mm -hmm. it may be well with thee? Read. And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. So now Boaz was, Boaz was going to be busy dealing with barley in the threshing floor. So our foremother Naomi is speaking to Ruth on what needs to be done. Because guess what? She needed to deal with Boaz so that the seed can be continued. Okay, go ahead. Wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. You see what he's saying? Is now she's 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 guiding her because she's now Naomi, she's an aged woman, she's an older sister. You understand? She's teaching this young woman, listen, this is how you're gonna do things. You understand? For this man to see you as a righteous woman, as a virtuous woman, like we read in, in Ruth 3, verse 11. You understand? To show respect and honor and reverence to this man. This is what you must do. He says, Wash thyself. Therefore, sisters, wash yourself and anoint thee. You know what? Deck yourself, okay? And put thine raiment upon thee. Don't be like a ragamuffin and get thee down the floor, okay? But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. Meaning what? While he's eating and all of that, don't be disturbing the man. Let him be done. You understand? She's guiding him. Because she's an older sister. To love their husbands. How are you going to love this, this, this husband of this husband that you're gonna you're gonna be married to? This is what you must do. Before anything else, this is what you need to do to get his attention. Go ahead. So, what is Naomi teaching her? She's teaching a game. This is game right here. Okay, go ahead. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. Mm -hmm. and, shall, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down and he will tell thee what thou should do. You see what now? So this act right here of this woman literally lying down at his feet where, because he was lying down, says you're going to find him lying down. Okay, it says, it says what? Uh, it says, and it shall be when he lieth down, remember he was eating and drinking, it says, and thou shalt mark the place where he lieth. You must note where he is sleeping, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay, thee, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. So what she's doing, you know what she's doing? She's, that's, that's an act of submission. 
she's lying at his feet as a sign of submission and reverence to this man. Naomi is teaching this woman game. Because, you know, for the past days, I was in Limpopo, you know, facilitating Lobola. And there was a time when the damsel now had to be brought so we can witness to make sure that it's really her, that we're not giving money to somebody we don't know. <laughs> so when she came, right, um, the aunt brought the sister now. The sister came, and so it was me, my father, my mother, and my sister. So as we sit in there, okay, the, 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 the damsel comes, and they put like a carpet on the floor and all that. So she came, um, she sat down. And when she sat down, she didn't look nobody in the face. She looked down on the floor. She looked down on the floor. You understand? She bowed her head down. She was looking down the whole time as we was talking. And then now we needed to witness it to make sure that it's really her. And then she was commanded to lift her head up. And then we were able to see, oh, okay, no, that's really her. That's Makoti right there. But what I'm trying to show you is that that was a sign of submission and respect. You understand? That's some heavy stuff right there. Go ahead. And she went down onto the floor and mm -hmm. did according to all that her mother-in-law paid her. Read. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of the corn and she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay her down. You see that? So what I'm trying to show you here is that she was, she was what? That's what, this was an act of submission to this man. You understand? So Naomi was teaching this, sis, this Moabite woman how to love Boaz. The first thing she, he must, she must do is to get his attention by what? By being submissive and to reverence him. These are the things that sisters need to know in order for them to win the heart of a man. You understand? Hmm. Let's go back to Titus. Two verse four again. The book of Titus, chapter two, verse four. Read that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. To do what? To love their children. To love their husbands and to love their children. Now, we went over how to love their husbands because, and then it says to love their children. Let's go back to First Timothy now. 5 verse 14 again. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verses 14. Go ahead. I will therefore that the younger woman marry, bear children, Stop guide right the there. home. He says, the younger women marry. So, guess what? What we read in Titus 2, when it says uh, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands. So, in order for them to be taught to love their husbands, they are being prepared for marriage so that when it's time for them to get married, they know how to deal with a man. They know how to deal with a husband. You understand? So when it says the young woman must marry, bear children, they have to be prepared for marriage. And who must prepare them for marriage? The older sisters must do that. You understand? That's their job. Because another way of loving their husbands, I'll give this simple example. Give me the book of Le Leviticus 12. Okay? I'm coming to the kids now in a second. Leviticus chapter 12. Okay, Leviticus 12 verse 1. Watch this. Read that. Leviticus 12 verse the book 1. Of Leviticus. Chapter 12 verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, mm -hmm. then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation, for her infirmity shall be shall she be un unclean shall she be unclean so it says she shall be unclean seven days you understand according to the, the days of her separation 
Next verse. Go ahead. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So on the eighth day, so, so the first seven days she has unclean. The eighth day, they must circumcise the flesh of his foreskin if she gave birth to a boy child. Go ahead. And she, and she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. Thirty-three she days. Shall so thirty-three days, thirty-three days she shall continue of a purifying for thirty-three days. Go ahead. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of a purifying be fulfilled. So now, for if you give birth to a boy, that means you cannot be, you will be unclean and be in the process of your purification for how many days? 40 days, if it's a boy. So in those 40 days, as a woman, you cannot be dealing with a man. Because you are unclean and you are still in that process of purifying yourself. You understand? Because that's why a lot of the times when, you, when a woman gives birth, they, they bring the grandmother or her mother to help her during those first, first couple of... Read the next verse. Come on. The book of Leviticus of the 12 verse 5. But if she be a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks mm -hmm. as he's a, in her separation. Right. And she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. So now you've got 14 days, then you've got three score and six days. That's 66 days. So all in all is how many days? 80 days. So if she gives birth to a, a male child, meaning a female, guess what? A girl... You cannot deal with that woman for how many days? 80 days. You understand? You can't. And I'm, because you might be wondering, but he's not saying that here. Watch this. Let's go to Matthew. Give me Matthew chapter one. I'll give an example because in the New Testament now, um, Matthew chapter one, Matthew chapter one and verse... Matthew 1 verse 25, last verse. Matthew chapter 1 verse 25, read that. The book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 25. Come on. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And, and he called his name Jesus. So now this is Joseph with Mary. So it says Joseph knew her not, meaning what? He didn't deal with with his with his wife until she brought forth her firstborn child that's jesus the christ so while she was pregnant he didn't sleep with her and after she gave birth he had to wait how many days 40 days until he was able to deal with mary you understand because christ he had brothers and sisters you understand so what we're reading here is Going back to what we just read in Leviticus. So when it says to love their husbands, this is another way of loving their husbands. And who's supposed to teach that? The older women must teach these things. You understand? Leviticus now, 15. Here's another one. I'm just giving an example of this is what it means. These are some of these things that the, these young sisters, they need to know these things. Okay? Leviticus 15. Because here's a big one. Okay? Leviticus chapter 15 and verse, let's start at verse 19. Leviticus 15 verse 19. Watch this. The book of Leviticus chapter 15 verses 19. Go ahead. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. So now this is the woman that is on her menstrual periods. You understand? She's on her periods. It says, guess what? It says uh, she must be put away seven days, right? Whoever, whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. Meaning deal with this woman while she's on her periods. But some women, they don't say. Some women, in fact, they like it like that. They say, no, you don't need, you don't need lubricant. Some nasty stuff, yeah. 
Okay? Nasty stuff. But guess what? Some women, they have sex while they are on their periods. You understand? Read. And everything that she lieth upon in a separation shall be unclean. Mm -hmm. Everything on. that she sits it upon shall be unclean. Read. And whosoever toucheth her and whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. Read. And whosoever touches anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. Because this is now at the point where, because remember, we they used to have what well, that's when it says she shall be put apart seven days because they had there was an actual place where the sisters would go when they are on their menstrual so that she's not in the house. That's where they would go. So all those women that were on their menstrual, that's where they would go there to some place apart for their uncleanness for those seven days. Go ahead. And Read, verse it, 24 now. Read verse 24. Let's get to verse 24. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 15 verse 24. And if any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him. He shall be unclean seven days, and all the bed whereupon whereon he lieth shall be unclean. You see what he's saying? It says, if any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him, meaning those menstrual things, they be touching you, he shall be unclean seven days, and all the bed wherein he lieth upon, when he lieth, shall be unclean. So the older women, their job is to teach these young women about this thing. That when you're on your menstrual, you're not supposed to deal with your man. Even if the blood is not there for the, let's say, three days after you, know, you started, you're on the third day and the blood is no longer, you are still unclean. The seven days is not complete yet. You are still unclean at this point. Until the seven days be complete. You understand? Now, let's go back. Go back to um, go back to First Timothy, because I want to go back there. First Timothy five, verse fourteen again. Second book. First book of Timothy, chapter five, verses fourteen. I will therefore that the younger woman marry, bear children, guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So what we're reading, it says, the younger women must marry. Like we went over Titus 2, they must be prepared for marriage. Now it's time for them to get married. They must marry according to the law. And before they marry, they must be prepared for marriage. You understand? And the proving process must take place. You understand? And they must marry according to the law. Give me that in Tobit. Okay, Tobit chapter 7. Tobit chapter 7 and verse... Hmm, watch this. Give me the book of Genesis real quick. Before we get to Tobit. Uh, give me Genesis 24 and verse... Start at verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 24 verses 1. Read. And Abraham was old. And well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Mm -hmm. Read. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house. That ruled over all that he had. Put I pray thee thy hand uh, under my thigh. So now he's going to make him to swear an oath. Okay. Because remember he's stricken. He's well stricken in age. Okay. Read. That, so he wants his oldest servant to be able to fulfill the promise that he's going to give him. Okay, come on. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou mm -hmm. shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Read, meaning don't marry these black, ashy, uh, Hamite women. Go ahead. But thou shalt go unto my, my country and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. 
So now the oath is about him going out there to take a wife for his son Isaac. That's what the oath is about. Okay, watch this. Now let's jump down. Let's jump down to verse. Read verse 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 24, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at that time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. So now he's going to get there at the time when the women go out to draw water. Watch this. Remember, he's going out to do what? To look for a wife for Isaac. Because of what? Because of Abraham's command. Go ahead. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Read. Right? Behold, I stand here by a well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Come on. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for my servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. So now he says, the woman that is gonna that's gonna do this is gonna he says, God, let that let that let let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Meaning the woman that is going to do that for me when I arrive, when I'm there, guess what? She's the one that is going to be what? That is going to be taken to be wife to Isaac. Okay? Now, what the reason why I'm reading this is because I'm trying to show you is that they must be prepared for marriage. So you must think about it. Which means... Isaac was prepared for marriage, you understand, because he was being raised to be a man. Our foremother, Rebecca as well, she was prepared for marriage by her parents. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebecca came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her picture upon her shoulder. Go ahead. Meaning what? She was a virtuous woman. She was laboring. She was not idle. Go ahead. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled the pitcher and came up. You see, now what I want to show you here says the damsel was fair to look upon, meaning she was beautiful sister, a virgin. Okay, neither a virgin, meaning she was a young, she was young, she was a young woman of marriageable age. Not only that, neither had any man known her. She has not slept with a man. Now watch this. Give me the book of Tobit real quick. Okay, Tobit chapter 3, verse 14. This is, this is, our, this is our sister now, Sarah. Is it Sarah or Anna? Sarah, I believe it's uh, Sarah. Yes, Sarah. Um, Toby 3 verse 14. Watch this. The book of Toby chapter 3 verse 14. Go ahead. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men. You see what she's saying? It says, I am pure from all sin with men. Next verse. Watch this. She's going to explain what she means by that. Go ahead. And that I never polluted my name. Mm hmm the name of my father in the land of my captivity. Go ahead. I am the only daughter of my father. Neither hath he any child to be his heir, neither any near kinsman nor any son of his alive to whom I may keep myself for a wife. Mm -hmm. My seven husbands are already dead. And why should I live? But if it please not thee that I should die, command some regard Command some regard to be had of me and pity taken of me that I hear no more reproach. That I hear no more reproach. Now, because you might be wondering why she's saying 
um, my seven husbands. Because remember, when you are promised to someone, they're your husband. You understand? So that's why she's saying that. But she has not dealt with the men. Even those seven men, those seven husbands, because she was betrothed to them. They all died in the marriage chamber before they can even deal with it. The Mosai put them to death because there was some demon going on. That's when Azariah came. They had the fish. They took the liver of the fish. You can read the history on your own. But what I want to show you here is, you see what she says in verse 14? It says, thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men, and I never polluted my name nor the name of my father in the land of my captivity. Because guess where we are now? In the lands of our captivity. So there's no excuse when sisters can say, but we're in captivity, if that was back in the day. No, no, they were in captivity. She what? She's pure from all sin with men. She didn't, deal, she didn't have sex with no man. It says, and I never polluted my name. So guess what happens? Sex with a man, before you get married, you pollute your name. Because you're going to be called a what? A hoe. No, the name of my father, because you bringing shame to your father's house. But not you righteous sisters up in here, because you've repented now, okay? But what I'm trying to show you is that I'm giving an, another example of what we read in Genesis, the 24th chapter. Let's go back there, okay? Because this is how it was. That's why I, this, the topic is marry before you carry. So now Abraham is sending his master to go and look for a wife for Isaac. This woman that they're going to look for, she has not dealt with a man. Why? She has not had sex. Why? Because her parents, they prepared this woman for marriage. So that when the time comes, she will be what? She will be, she will be joined to that man for life. Because she's not supposed to deal with any man before marriage. You understand? Okay, Genesis 24, verse 16 again. The book of Genesis chapter 24, verse 16. Read. And the devil was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Mm -hmm. Neither had any man known her. And she went, and she went down to, to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. Now jump down to verse 47 now. The book of Genesis chapter 24, verses 47. You know what? Read verse 34. I like verse 34 down. Read verse 34 down. Watch this. Now, they are having a conversation. This is Abraham 7 and Rebecca. Watch this. Read verse 34. The book of Genesis, chapter 24, verses 34. Go ahead. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had blessed my master greatly. And he is become great. And he had given me flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. So now Abraham's servant is telling Rebecca, our foremother, that Abraham is wealthy, he's rich. Okay, but watch the next verse. Go ahead. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And unto him hath he given all that he hath. Meaning what? Isaac, all the, the wealth, the riches, Isaac is our forefather Isaac is going to receive all of that. That's what he's saying. Meaning what? When you, you are taken to be married, you're not going to starve. That's what she's saying right there. That's what he's telling you. Okay? Beautiful stuff right there. So, men, you brothers, you better prepare yourself for that thing. As long as you are a black, broke, ashy Negro, you don't qualify for to marry no sister. Okay? I'm not saying you must be filthy, you must be rich, but you know how to take care of yourself and somebody else. That's all I'm saying. Okay, because we don't have these riches that our forefathers had yet. Okay. All I'm saying is know how to maintain yourself so you can maintain somebody else. That's all I'm saying. Jump down to verse. Read verse 48 now. Read verse 47. The book of Genesis, chapter 24, verses 47. Go ahead. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah be unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. 
So now Abraham seven gave our foremother Rebecca earrings, bracelets. Okay, go ahead. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. Because now he's already now declared. He already knows this is the woman right here. You understand? Go ahead. And now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Read. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. You see verse 50? It says, the, the, then Laban and Bethuel. These are the uncles now. Okay, these are the, uh, no, these are, this is the father and the uncle. It says, and Laban and Bethuel answered and said, the thing proceeded from the Lord. How did they know that? Because guess what? Our forefathers back then and our foremothers, they were spirit, more spiritually, you know, they were more spiritually inclined, if that's even the word I can use. You understand? They, 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 they had spiritual discernment. It was not a surprise that somebody is coming from afar to come and marry the daughter to ask this woman for marriage. It was not frowned upon. Or what family is she going to? Because why? Because we kept the commandments back then. It was already known that the family she's going to, they keep the commandments. And that man, he's a man. He knows how to take care of business. He's got a job. He's going to take care of me. He's going to take care of my, the household. He's going to take care of my, myself and the children. They knew that already. You understand? So today, there's a lot more child-proof laws that was put in for wicked Negroes. That's why now the proving has to happen. Why? Because we're not growing up. We didn't grow up in the law. We did not. So now you have to prove the Negro. You have to prove the negress to make sure that she's not a nigger no more. You, you must prove both of them. Okay. Read verse 50 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 24, verse 50. Mm -hmm. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, Take the thing proceeded from the Lord. We mm -hmm. cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Read. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as mm -hmm. the Lord had spoken. You see that thing? Because they knew it was of the Lord, because marriage is honorable. They knew this thing. It says, Take, it says, let her, it says, let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord had spoken. You see that thing right there? Because they understood this thing that this is of the Lord right here. That's why there's no, they are not going back and forth, you know, like, no, no, they understand. These are men of wisdom and understand. They understood what was going on here. Now, this is, this, what you are seeing here is the, today they call it lobola. You understand? When you go and meet the uncles and all of that to ask the daughter in marriage for your son and all that. Yes, that's what this man is doing at Abraham's command. That's what we was doing this past weekend. So what I'm going to show you here, this is our culture. You understand? So when it says that the younger women marry, they must be prepared for marriage. And this is when, this is how marriage takes place. They send somebody over there to, to deal with the other family to take the woman so that the woman can, can be taken in marriage. Okay? Watch this. Next verse. Go ahead. And it came to pass. That when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing mm -hmm. himself to the Lord. Praise the Lord, because it was of the Lord. Read. And the servants brought forth jewels of silver and mm -hmm. jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He, he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. You see what he's saying? So these are the gifts that we, we take with when we go to the... That's what we do. You understand? You must bring gifts. So that when you're done also, they give you gifts. But the key is, you must, you must not go there empty-handed. 
Okay, you don't go there empty-handed. You understand? Read. And they did eat and drink. He mm -hmm. and the men that were with him and tarried the whole and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning and he said, Send me away unto my master. So now what, what you are seeing here is you see what happened? Verse 53. Verse 50, they knew that, okay, this is of the Lord. She must be given as a wife. You can take her to be the wife of your master's son. Then verse 53 says, and the seven brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, meaning clothes, and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. So coming back to today, the way it's done, okay, you, they're going to tell you the things that you must bring. You bring those things. After the things that they ask you to bring, you bring, after you bring them and they've received them, then after that thing is concluded, meaning the exchange of the, you, they ask for this, you give them. They ask for that amount, you give them. You ask for the next amount, you give them until it's done. Once it's done and everybody's happy on that side, then only then you get to meet the uncles and all of that. And then that's when the feast takes place. That's what we're reading here. The feast takes place at this point right here. That's why they were feasting. You understand? But what I want to show you is that this has to happen first. These are the steps before the woman gets married. Now give me Tobit 7 verse 13. The book of Tobit, chapter 7, verses 13. Mm -hmm. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father, and he blessed him. So now this is when now you're, you're a womb. this woman is given, the father is giving her hand in marriage to this man. You understand? Listen, take over from where I left off. That's why the father is doing that. Listen, I took my daughter from the time she was born, when she was in her mother's womb, and she, she was born, I was looking after her. Now she's at this age, I was still looking after her. Your job is to take where I left off and move on to the next level. You understand? Read. And called Edna, his wife, and took paper and did write an instrument of covenant and sealed it. You see that thing right there? After that happens, then what happens next? They must seal the instruments of covenant. That's the marriage certificate. So... The father will bring their daughter. You want to be taken in marriage. You understand? And then the instruments of covenant must be signed, signed and sealed. That's what we didn't read about in Genesis. Okay? Read. And they began to eat. They, now the feasting goes. So that happens when the father gives their daughter in marriage to this man. And then they have to write instruments of covenant, marriage papers. And then they begin to eat. That's where the feasting comes in, what we are reading here. So there's a lot of stuff that they didn't mention in the book of Genesis. Tobit is giving details out. Go ahead. After Reguel called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber and bring her in thither. So this chamber is the, where they consummate the marriage, where the men and women will now have sex. During the marriage feast. Because during the marriage feast, they will prepare the marriage chamber and on the bed, they will put the cloth there so that when you, do, when you have sex, the hymen breaks, the blood will be on the sheet so that the father can collect that as evidence that my daughter was not a hoe. She had not dealt with a man before. In case you come back and say, I married your daughter and I find her not a virgin, she is a hoe. So you can be what? So they can bring the father will bring the sheet as evidence saying, no, no, she was a virgin. This is the evidence right here. You understand? So what I'm showing you is when it says the young woman must marry, yes, you must get married, but you must be prepared for that marriage. And these are the steps. These are the further steps of what needs to happen. You get prepared for marriage. 
And then you have to go through the process of now getting married. You understand? Which, what we read in Genesis, what we read in Tobit, these are the things that needs to happen. Once you are married, go back to First Timothy now. Chapter 5, verse 14. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 14. Go ahead. I will therefore that the younger woman marry, mm -hmm. bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So now the marriage has happened. It says now bear children. You see that thing right there? Give me that in First Timothy. First Corinthians now. First Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians chapter 7. Okay. No, you know what? Hmm. Give me Hebrews 13 verse 4. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. Mm -hmm. And the bed am defiled. But homemongers and adulteresses, God will judge. So now what you are seeing here is marriage is honorable. That's what we read. They must get married. Then it says, and the bed undefiled. At that point, now your bed is undefiled because now you are under the covenant of marriage. You understand? That's why he's saying, and the bed undefiled. Now you can bear children because your bed is undefiled now. For the children to be had, guess what? Men and women must have sex for children to come. At that point, your bed is undefiled. But homemongers and adulterers, God will judge. Outside of marriage, the, guess what? The Lord is going to judge you. Why? Because you didn't follow the steps of what is written on how marriage must be done. You understand? Watch this. Now give me 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 3. First book of Corinthians chapter 7 verses 3. Read. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. So now this goes into what? This goes into sex. You understand? Intimacy and all of that stuff. That's what this is going into. That's why it says your bed undefiled. So you have to give to your wife due benevolence and likewise the wife unto the husband. You know, I think somebody sent me the, the article, right? Let me see. I think it's Sister Phoebe sent me this article. Let me see something. Give me one sec. Mm. Because apparently these days there's a thing called um, marital what? Raped. M you know, you're raped. Marital rape. What is that? Marital rape. How do you get raped by your husband while you're married? You see, like, I'm trying to show you, like, you know, today, the mind of the black woman today, oh, my God, man. They are the only ones, by the way, that say that. I don't see any other women be saying stuff like that. I hear black women be saying, my husband raped me. How does that make any sense in the, whatsoever? How does that make sense? How can your husband rape you? He's your husband. Thank God for the bone. Yeah, that's all I have to say about it. First Corinthians 7 now, verse 4. First book of Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 4. Go ahead. The wife hath not power of her own body, mm -hmm. but the husband. And likewise, also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. You see what he's saying? You don't have power over your own body when it comes to sex. Husband and wife. You understand? You must render unto your spouse due benevolence. Okay, go ahead. Verse 5. Read. Defraud, defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your, incon for your inco incontinency. Incontinency. Incontinency mean, incontinency mean lack of self-control. So, but what I'm showing you, it says, defraud ye not the other, defraud ye not one the other. You know what it means to defraud? To what? To deprive. It says, don't, once you're married, 
don't deprive your husband of sex. Once you are married, do not deprive your wife of sex. Because that's the reason why we be hearing things like, my husband raped me. How can your husband rape you? He's your husband. You know why? You know why that, that, that you know what this, this marital rape is popping up now? Is because women are saying, this is my body. If I don't want my, if I don't want to give, if I don't feel like having sex today, tonight, my husband is not going to get it. That's the mindset. I'm telling you, that's the reason why these things happen. And now they say, no, my husband raped me. How did your husband rape you, ma'am? But he's your husband. That means she's not applying the scriptures. When it says, give unto your husband due benevolence. Whenever your husband wants sex, you must give that man sex. He's, is his right. What are you talking about? The hell is this? That is right. You can't say, no, I don't. Today, no, I have a headache. No, I have this. No, I'm tired. You know, I've been, I've been, I have miracle. I was at work. N -n -n no, sister. No. There's no. And there's no such thing as, you know, I don't feel like it. No, no. Mm -mm. No. There's no such thing. I don't feel like it. That's the reason why you see today men be cheating. I'm not saying you should do that. But my point is this. I mean, come on now. That's why a lot of these women, they don't want to be married. They are married, but they don't want to be married. They want traditional, they want a traditional man, but they want to remain these modern day women. You want the man to take care of business. You want the man to pay the bills. Want the man to look after you. You want the man to protect, you understand, to nurture and all of that stuff. You want the man to ask you for marriage, but you don't want you don't want to act like a traditional woman according to the scriptures. What it means, meaning to submit yourself to this man. You understand? But you want to be a modern woman, but you want to be married to a traditional man. That makes sense? No, that don't make no sense. Okay? Read that thing again, verse 5. First book of Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. Defraud ye not. Defraud ye not one the other except mm -hmm. it be with consent for a time except what do you mean? it says don't defraud one another except it be consent for is be with consent for a time he's going to give an example what he means by that go ahead that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer so now if let's say and you come want to, to fast hold on wait if you want to fast you are married you want to fast. You must tell your husband, listen, babe, I, I would like to fast uh, tomorrow and all of that. So he has to agree though. The wife or the wife, husband also can say, I would like to fast. So the two of you must agree. That's why it says, except it be with consent. Meaning you must get consent from your husband or your wife. Because you cannot defraud her of sex. Okay that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come and come together again. Meaning what? You can have sex now. After. You can't, while you are fasting, be having sex because you're going to defile yourself. Okay, go ahead. That what? That ye, may, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again. That mm -hmm. Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. That Satan tempts you not. Meaning what? Satan does not come between you where you, you, you hide him behind. Yo, I'm fasting. So therefore, you're not going to deal with your wife. I'm fasting. You're not going to deal with your husband. But you didn't follow the scriptures. The scripture says, if it be with consent, meaning the two of you must agree. That's what he's saying right there. Because if you don't agree, you do it without telling your, your wife or your husband. Satan will tempt you. Satan will come in between you. Why? Because he wants sex or she wants sex. You saying I'm fasting. So when she wants it, what's she going to do? When he wants it, what is he supposed to do? You see this thing? That's the reason why you see a lot of these black women that go to church every Sunday. A lot of them, they hate their husbands. They don't submit themselves to their husbands. They do not do it. They don't. That's why a lot of them, they get, they, they divorce. That's why the divorce rate is so high. Because of that. Because they don't follow the scriptures, but they say, praise Jesus. But it's not the God of this Bible. 
Okay, let's go back to First Timothy. First Timothy chapter five, verse fourteen. First book of Timothy, chapter five, verse fourteen. I will therefore that the younger woman marry, Great. bear children, mm -hmm. guide the house. Go ahead. Give none occasion to uh, to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So now it says guide the house, meaning now go back, now go to Titus now. Titus 2, verse 5 now. They must guide the house. Because in order for you to bear children, you need to have sex. That's where children come from. Men and women having sex. So it says bear children. Once you bear those children, guess what you must do? Read verse, actually, you know what? Read verse 4 again. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 4. Read that they may teach the young women to be sober, mm -hmm. to love their husbands, to love their children, to love their husbands, to love their children. Now that they have children, they must be taught how to love those kids. You understand? And how do they do it? Give me that in Psalm 78 verse 5. This is how they must love their children. Okay. Because now they are parents now. You see what happens? Because we read it earlier. Actually, you know what? Let's read that. Go back to the history of Susanna. History of Susanna chapter 1, verse 3. We read that earlier. Let's use that example again. History of Susanna, chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. You see what parents do? Once you have children, your job now is to teach your children the laws of God, the laws of Moses, that the Most High God gave unto him to teach unto us. So that's what responsible parents do. That is responsible parenting. Responsible parenting is you teach your children the laws of the Most High God. You understand? That's how you love your children. Teach them God's laws. Go back to where he was at now. Titus 2. Read verse 5. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 5. Read. To be discreet. Uh -huh. Chase. Keep us at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So now, not only that, he says these older women will teach these young women to be discreet. To have discretion. You understand? To, to have respect and honor to their husbands because a lot of the times you know when he says to be discreet it means that you cannot be discussing your husband's weaknesses you cannot be telling the your family members in the world that don't give a damn about this bible your problems in your marriage you go out to your mother who couldn't keep a man you go out to your sister who cannot keep a man she's bouncing from man to man She's got kids, no father, no husband. You're going to those people to ask for marital advice. You are not discreet. You don't have discretion. You're supposed to go to the older sisters in the truth that have been around that can guide you how to deal with your problems in your marriage. You understand? Discretion. And guess what? You having you have a disagreement with your husband and all of that. You guess what you do? You, you sisters, you must understand this. You be, you be disrespecting your husband. You be, um, you be making a mockery of his weaknesses. Because everybody got weaknesses. You make a mockery of his weaknesses. That man is not going to love you. That man is going to hate your guts. I'm telling you right now. You make a mockery of his weaknesses. You hit below the belt. You disrespect him. You, you, you destroy his ego. You, you see what I'm saying? That man is not going to love you. I'm telling you straight. He's not going to do it. He's not going to love you. He will hate your guts. So you must learn discretion. You understand? Read. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 5. To be discreet. Chased you must be disciplined at home. Chased means you must be disciplined in God's commandments. Read. 
keepers at home. You must take care of the house. You must cool. take care of the household because that's your job. Even if you have a job nine to five, you must still make sure that your house is in order as a sister. Go ahead. Good, obedient to their own husbands that the word of God be not blasphemed. He says, you must be obedient to, their, to your own husband. The older sisters, their job is to teach these young sisters all of what we just read. They must be obedient to their own husbands, not to disrespect their husbands. You understand? And all of that is, must be taught from a young age. You must be prepared for that. You must be taught the right way. When you come into the truth, you are not, a, you are not, you are not 18 years anymore. That's fine. You must be born again and be taught again as a small baby so you can grow in this truth and get wisdom. Humble yourself to the laws of God. Okay? I'm going to end that class right there. All praise to the Most High. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for laying his life down for his people, Israel. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and, we had sup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do he, as oft as he drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat, this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All praise to the most high. All praise to the Lord.